and you know, particularly as medical students, you know, as medical students, we're really not taught anything about prevention. You know, we're taught about diseases, right? And you look for a disease in somebody, and if you find that disease, you either cut it out or you treat it with medications, right? And that, there's a place for that, but prevention is really not part of it because we just have so much pathology we have to learn in med school. Um, and well, I think you guys would agree with me that you know, while we here in the states have probably the best medical system in the entire world, I think you guys would agree with me that it really is a broken system, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, it's really a system now that is designed to take care of you when you're really, really ill. And so the whole impetus behind this lecture is to empower you with the knowledge and hopefully the inspiration that you can take healthy back, that you can take your health back, you can have charge of your health, no matter what your health journey looks like tonight, you can have a big impact going future as to how that pathology might or may not uh, present itself. So the general outline we're gonna follow here this evening is that we're gonna talk about you know, chronic disease conditions and how lifestyle affects that. And then I'm gonna spend a large amount of time tonight talking about whole food nutrition. Fr you know, fruit and veggie powder concentrates and capsules. And why is a physician now with almost 20 years of working knowledge of the importance of nutrition, why I consider it mandatory that we should be supplementing our diets with whole food concentrated nutrition. And that's for a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, and I think it was a couple years ago, the CDC came out and stated that 90% you know, of Americans barely get one to two servings of veggies a day. And believe it or not, you know, that statistic's actually gotten worse because it used to be about 80%. Now it's up to 90. So you know, the cornerstone of health is eating fruits and veggies. We're just not doing it. Um, that's one reason to supplement. The other one is if you're a vegan or you, you, know, you eat lots of fruits and veggies, there was a study that came out of Stanford, and I think, now with COVID, that kind of threw a wrench in my timeline, but I think it was about, I think it was about six years ago now, um, that came out of Stanford where they're finding out that the nutrient density of the produce that we're putting into our bodies is not what it was 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years ago. You know, even with good crop rotation, they're finding out that we're losing all the, a lot of the nutrients in the soil that is then not translated into that fruit or veggie and then into our bodies. So a whole food supplementation is so vital. I'm gonna talk a lot about that. I'm gonna talk about the research behind that as well because that's kind of my jam. And then I'm gonna finish up by telling you my story, how I got to, to do what I'm doing tonight, what's very different than what I was trained to do. And then hopefully um, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys an intimate family story that will hopefully um, inspire you to make some simple changes in your life and realizing it does not have to be daunting uh, at all to make health changes going forward. So before again, this is kind of a new slide I stuck in. <clears throat> this was a study that was uh, commissioned back in 2021 in the midst of COVID, where the researchers were just then looking at uh, the mortality, morbidity and mortality, the people who were dying of COVID. What did their lifestyle look like? And they went through all of the data, the exercising, eating, and this is one of the biggest findings that you can see. It says, we demonstrate that the combined intake of veggies and fruits prevents and reduces the incidence and mortality rates of COVID-19 kind of the big elephant in the room, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we kind of knew this, we just didn't have the, the statistics. You, know, you, you have to understand this machine that we have been given is an incredible machine, but you have to put the right nutrition in it. You have to take care of this machine in order for it to work well. And hopefully you'll get that by the end of, uh, by the, end of the talk. So I always start off by talking about the Okinawan population uh, because they're long considered to be some of the healthiest individuals in the world. You know, they live an average lifespan of at least 81 years. And I think, honestly, I think the study is now almost 60 years into the study. And what the researchers have found out is that only about one third of their longevity can be attributed to their genetics or their genes. Okay. But it is their healthy lifestyle that accounts for about two thirds of their life expectancy. You know, the key to healthy aging is maintaining healthy lifelong weight through diet and exercise. But what I think is significant about this entire study is it really does show that our lifestyle can trump our genetic inheritance. You know, we don't have to be victims of the genes that we inherited from our parents and their parents and their parents. You know, simply by engaging in a healthy lifestyle, you can, you know, you can change these genes on and off. You can flip your genes on and off using something called epigenetic switches, right? You know, you're hardwired to your DNA, right? You can't change your DNA. But what you do have the ability to do is to modulate those genes by the switches that exist on the outside called epigenomes. And we know that lifestyle, eating right and exercising properly, has the ability to switch those genes um, on and off or those switches. 
Um, I always tell people just because, you know, <coughs> great grandma had breast cancer and grandma had breast cancer and mom had breast cancer doesn't mean that you're destined to get that cancer. Okay, again, because we know through the study something called epigenetics that exercising and eating properly will flip those genes on and off. And I'll be bringing in some research to really prove this at, at the end, okay? So we know that the two big pillars of, pillars of health is exercising and eating properly. And when I talk about exercising, I'm talking about just moving, getting up and walking. Uh, because they're finding out that sedentary behavior is not good. Um, they're found out that if you sit four or more hours consecutively on a fairly regular basis, that is equivalent to the health detrimental effects of smoking a pack of cigarettes every day. Yeah, believe it or not. You know, smoke, uh, you know, sedentary behavior is kind of the new smoking of the generation. You know, it increases cardiovascular disease by 125%. And this is a scary part over here is that it increases risk from death from any cause by up to 50%. So movement is key. And there was a study that came out of Canada a few years ago that really proved this point. And this is a big study where they looked at lifestyle and its effect on breast cancer. And I think it was like they looked at between 50 and 60 randomized control trials. And again, on lifestyle and its effect on breast cancer. And when they parsed through thousands of pages of data, this is one of the biggest things that they found, was that of all the lifestyle factors, physical activity or exercise has the most robust effect on breast cancer outcomes. Whether preventing breast cancer in the first place or preventing it from occurring if you've already had it. So there was a slide I put up that had a banner that said, exercise is medicine. Absolutely it is. And you know, we're just talking about getting up and moving, getting up and walking, <coughs> keep your body running. Our bodies were meant uh, to move. <coughs> it's one of my favorite slides right there. <laughs> the egg of a BOSU bar right there. <laughs> um, so you know what? You cannot compete with what you eat, right? If you go to the gym and you work out, and then you go refuel your body at Taco Bell, well, you probably just waste a big chunk of your time at the gym. Because what you put in here absolutely complements what you do as far as an exercise program. So eating properly is important to do so, and we can't do so. And what does that look like? Well, we heard it for years and decades. You know, eat fruits and veggies. The more fruits and veggies you put onto your plate, not only the healthier you're going to be, but the better you're going to feel. We just know that for sure. And it's diets that are loaded up with plants combined with an exercise program that has a profound influence on a lot of the chronic disease conditions that you hear about, you know, that you read about, that perhaps afflict you uh, or people that you know. And I've highlighted some of these in red because they tend to be more common than others. Perhaps you struggle or you know people who struggle with things like asthma, cancer, you know, heart disease, diabetes, and that's the arthritis. Those diseases in red, but actually all chronic disease conditions have one common denominator that links them all together. And that's something called oxidative stress. And so I just want to explain what that is going forward because it's kind of cutting edge stuff in medicine today. When we talk about oxidative stress, we're talking about the stress that oxygen places on your body. You know, similar to when you cut an apple in half and you leave that apple exposed to oxygen or room air, what happens to the apple over a period of time? Well, you can see it becomes brown, right? it becomes oxidized. Um, you can think of it as aging quicker, faster. Well, a parallel process is actually going on inside of our bodies <laughs> as we take in oxygen. While we need oxygen, it can act as a double-edged sword in producing these things called free radicals that can accelerate aging and can accelerate disease processes. Another way of looking at oxidative stress is comparing it to a car engine. You know, a car engine utilizes gasoline to combust I just realized this slide's gonna become extinct. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I had to find a new slide. But anyway, you know, cars utilize energy, they utilize gasoline to combust and, and make a usable form of energy to make that car run. But out of that external combustion comes obviously a toxic byproduct in the form of exhaust. Well, our body's engines are called mitochondria. And it's these ovoid organelles that exist inside the cells of our bodies. These are the powerhouses of our body. Okay, this is where energy from the food that you eat combined with the oxygen that you breathe in, goes into making a usable form of energy to make your body run, that's something called ATP. But this is not an airtight process. And not all those molecules are utilized in the production of energy in the form of ATP. And so what happens is that you end up with this spillover effect of these highly charged reactive oxygen species, otherwise known as free radicals. And these free radicals, if they're not effectively neutralized, can very quickly escape from the mitochondria 
And then they begin to do damage to our nearby healthy cells silently without us actually feeling it. You know, free radicals have been, have been shown to damage the membranes that surround our cells and tissues. Um, they can attack the proteins inside of our bodies, which is key if you're an athlete. Uh, free radicals can attack our DNA, our genetic material. And real importantly, whether you are just getting out and going to work, all the way up to the elite athletes, cumulatively over a period of time, if these free radicals are not effectively neutralized, they'll begin to attack the very mitochondria that formed them. And the reason that's important is because, well, those are your energy producers, right? And energy production is gonna affect you whether you're just getting out and going to work all the way up to the elite athlete. And this is a process that can take years, if not decades, to actually manifest itself in actual disease processes, right? I mean, think about it. How many people do you know that are too tired to perform even the most basic tasks of daily life, right? Perhaps you struggle, or you know people who struggle with getting through the day. And you wake up at, you know, four, five, six, eight, seven o'clock in the morning with energy, and by one or two o'clock in the afternoon, game off, game over. And that doesn't have to be any of us by any stretch of the imagination. So neutralizing this byproduct of our daily metabolism is important to do so, and we can do so, because we all come equipped with. We were all born with this complex internal enzymatic and non-enzymatic cascade that acts as a frontline defense system in attempting to neutralize all these free radicals that we produce every day. And I have to tell you guys, you're doing it too. This is one of my favorite slides of me looking at all you guys looking at this slide right here. <laughs> From my vantage point, it's what? just blank stares yeah. everywhere. <laughs> what is it? What is and actually, I don't remember this stuff. I have to go back to med school for that. But the reason, the reason why I put this up is that even though God gave us a system that attempts to neutralize these three radicals, the research is very clear. That the system that we're born with cannot function by itself that the system that we're born with, unfortunately, will eventually fail, unless that system is properly fortified. And we fortify that system, well, it's through our diets, but specifically diets that are rich in fruits and veggies, and specifically the rainbow of colors. You know, the reds, the greens, the purples, the yellows. Because inside of those colorful pigments exist these very powerful plant chemicals called phytonutrients. And what I mean by phytonutrients is basically plant-based nutrition, right? It's thousands and thousands of powerful antioxidant substances found in all the fruits and veggies, and this is the key. All those plant nutrients are working together synergistically in very small amounts to be extremely powerful in the human body. <coughs> so you need to load up your plates with plants, and then the question is, how many? Now, based on the most current epidemiological and observation studies, it's now recommended that we should be consuming seven to 13 servings of fruits and veggies every day, and a serving is roughly the size of your fist. Uh, and I scroll up that every day, right? That's just not a couple of days a week that you get that amount. That is every single day for the rest of your life. You have to have that much to fuel that internal system. Um, and some of you all know that I have um, a whole other talk I do just for athletes. And I pulled some slides over for this talk. It was pretty remarkable. Um, and I can't remember the whole, the whole formula here, but it's based on a formula on kilocalorie output during exercise, BMI, and a couple other factors. But individuals who approximate 60 to 90 minutes or more of physical activity cumulatively within a 24-hour window, this is how many fruits and veggies you should be eating every single day. Wow was right. Good luck with that one. So forget this, right? Go back to seven to 13 servings. Do you and your family get seven to 13 servings of fruits and veggies every day? Are they picked vine ripened so they're the most nutrient dense? And are they in the rainbow of colors? You know, the researchers are now finding out it's not just the quantity that's important, it's the quality, it's the variety. Uh, the, all the different colors of the rainbow. Um, you know, over the years I have spoken to, you know, probably thousands of vegans, thousands of vegetarians, thousands of people who juice, and that's all healthy living, right? But take, for instance, people who juice. You know, while juicing is healthy, people who juice, though, typically juice the same four, five, six things, right? It's the variety of the rainbow of colors that's just as important as the quantity. So unless you get that quality and that quantity in your diet every single day for almost every single one of us, me included, there's going to exist some form of gap in our nutrition. And the traditional way that we've been bridging or narrowing that nutritional gap has been through the consumption of all these synthetic, isolated, laboratory-made vitamins and our multivitamins that we see everywhere on counters today. 
But very clearly, if you've been watching the research over the last 10, 15 years or so, multiple large scale studies that were started you know, 15, 20, 30 years ago, looking at whether taking vitamin supplements or multivitamins, whether they would have an impact in reducing chronic disease conditions, well, the data from those studies has started to roll in and is tell, telling us quite a different story. You know, in many instances, they're having no effect in human physiology, and believe it, in some instances, they're actually doing more harm than good. Um, and in fact, neither the American Heart Association nor the American Institute for Cancer Research recommend vitamin supplements to reduce cardiovascular disease or cancer. But what they do recommend, it's right on their websites, eat more fruits and veggies. Because eating more fruits and veggies will decrease your potential risk for cardiovascular disease. You know, eating more fruits and veggies will decrease your potential risk for cancer. And this is another slide I pull over from my athlete talk, because I've been talking about this for years, but I just didn't have a really good study to back it up. This is a very well-designed study where they're finding out that athletes that are taking vitamin supplements, like vitamin C, you know, like emergency, they're finding out that these synthetic vitamin supplements are mechanistically shutting down the adaptive health responses you should be getting from exercise, ultimately leading to a decrease in training efficiency. So they're finding out that vitamin supplementation is blunting or shutting down the natural adaptive responses that you get when you exercise that make you stronger, healthier, and more fit. Uh, and you'll hear my story here at the end as it totally relates to this. I didn't know this. The study wasn't around back when I was training. I wish it had been. So the bottom line is nature knows best, right? You know, what we have in nature is far superior to any man-made vitamin supplement produced in laboratories today. And so the bottom line is, based on all the studies that we know, it makes a whole heck of a lot more sense to bridge the nutritional gap that almost all of us have with whole raw food sources that contain your vitamins and minerals. But back up a second. You know, a lot of people think, and I fell into this category, a lot of people think that you eat fruits and veggies because they're loaded up with, with vitamins and minerals. Now, that's the smallest part of a fruit or veggie that makes you healthy. <laughs> what really makes you healthy is all the other things that are in that skin, in that pulp, in that fruit or veggie. All of the plant chemicals, you know, the carotenoids, the polyphenols, the flavonoids, those are what scientists are finding out really confer health to you, not necessarily you know, vitamins and minerals. So it makes more sense to bridge the gap with food versus bridging the gap with what I call no food, which are these synthetic isolates that short of a deficiency disease, our bodies simply don't know what to do with, other than excrete it if it's water-soluble or store it if it's a fat-soluble vitamin. So you think, just as a fitness facility provides equipment for us to get physically fit, um, there's a product on the market today that I and literally thousands of healthcare providers around the world recommend to get nutritionally fit, or what I like to say is getting fit at a cellular level. And the product that I've been taking and recommending is Juice Plus Essentials. The reason why is because it is the most thoroughly researched brand name nutritional product available today in the world bar none. There's so many products out there that's so confusing, but this one stands above all the others because of the large body of research. So let's talk about that research for about the next eight hours. <laughs> and believe me, I know there are people in this room tonight that would love for me to go eight hours on this. So. But I'll just touch on a little bit of it. But again, this is kind of my jam. I have a research background, so this is why this product is very important for me to understand. So this product is backed by years and years and years of independent third-party research, which means that the company provides the product to the research institution, and then they step back and they wait for the result, result of that study, either good or bad results. So the product is removed from the auspices of the potential bias you know, of a company doing research on its own product, it's taking a third party institution to remove that inherent bias. And then when the study's done, it's submitted to peer review journals for publication. Uh, these journals have a peer review board. I sat on one for a few years. You know, they're typically made up of MDs, PhDs, and other scientists. And you basically scrutinize that study before you accept it for publication. You, know, you look at the methodology of the study. You look at the design of the study. And if it was done properly, you accept it and publish it in your journal. If not, you turf it back out to be redone properly. So that's another layer of scrutiny the company puts the product through, which is a peer review screening. And a great majority of these studies that are accepted for publication adhere to what's called gold standard research, which is randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled studies. That is top-tier research. That's you know, the kind of research that I look for in my medical journals for legitimacy. 
And because I've been doing this for almost 20 years, I know just about every supplement on the market today. I'm constantly having people send me stuff like, what do you think about this and what do you think about that one? Some companies, some products do have research, but there are several journals out there that all you have to do is cut them a big fat check, the journal, and they'll publish your study. In other words, you can buy your way into a publication. And I think you guys would agree with me, I can see you nodding, that that is not legitimate publishable research. And that is a fundamental difference between this product and all the others that are on the market today. Uh, because I'll tell you what, there's no way in the world that you can buy your way into getting published in a top pediatric journal in this country. You cannot buy your way into getting published in a journal of the American College of Cardiology. You cannot buy your way into getting published in a top sports medicine journal in this country. This company does top quality research at top quality institutions and deserves the right to be accepted for publication based on methodology, design, and results. Okay, do you guys get that? Big, big difference. So to date, I got to keep reading the updates. This company's got on 28 years of research, now up to almost, there's 47, maybe 48 studies published. Uh, it's been studied in eight countries and four continents around the world. At, and I have to do this because one of my best friends in this company is a Yale graduate. It's been studied at really poor institutions like Yale. I have to do that every time, as you know. But, but, but this is just a handful of some institutions that have studied and done research on this product, unheard of in the nutritional supplement industry. Yale, Vanderbilt, Medical University of Rots, MD Anderson Cancer Center, numerous children's clinic in Jacksonville. You know, I know these institutions. These are highly reputable institutions doing research on a food product. This company spent over $15 million in research. That is unheard of in the nutritional supplement industry. Just need to get a Harvard one up in there. <laughs> so this is the rainbow of colors that I'm talking about. It's 30 different fruits, veggies, and berry powder concentrates in capsules. And that's the variety. And yes, because it's a powder that comes in a capsule and comes in a bottle, it's not a vitamin supplement. Okay, if you guys get nothing from this lecture tonight, get this. It's food, it's produce. You, know, you do get most of your vitamins and minerals, but you're getting them from the plant source. The form in which our bodies are meant to recognize and utilize. But like I've said, way beyond vitamins and minerals, it's the tens of thousands of plant chemicals that you get from eating things like bilberry, you know, black currant, you know, elderberry, I mean, honestly, who goes around eating that stuff every day, right? I don't even know where to buy it. You know, but they're loaded up with flavonoids and other plant chemicals that scientists are just now tapping into their health benefits in the human body. And so this is the big umbrella under which all of the research on this product uh, falls under. Multiple studies have shown that juice plus will reduce oxidative stress, which we talked a little bit about in the beginning, will reduce uh, markers of systemic inflammation, supports a healthy immune system, which was huge during COVID, helps protect DNA, supports cardiovascular wellness, and supports healthy skin and gums. The reason why I put that big broad list up for you guys is if you think about it, there isn't a single pharmacy or drugstore that you can walk into and purchase something, nor is there a prescription that I or any other doctor could write for you, that in totality would do every single one of those things that I just listed off for your body. It simply doesn't exist. You know, if I could write a script for you, it'd be this right here, right? You know, most of the time when you write out scripts, medical scripts, prescriptions, they always have side effects that you gotta write another script for, right? The biggest side effect that you get from that script is good health, period. <laughs> and so what is it? Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. So you guys have seen over the years, Plenty of copycats trying to copy what this company has done. This is the original, the, as we call it, the original gangster. The OG of uh, plant powders. This is it. And this is important to understand because you need to know what you're putting in your body. And I have circled on the back of the Juice Plus bottles this certification. It's called NSF certification. That is a third-party certification where the product is removed from the company and taken to a testing facility. And it's tested to make sure that what's in it's in it, fruits and veggies, and what's not in it is not in it. Things like stimulants, steroids, herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, heavy metals, you name it. And if that certification is not on the bottle itself, you cannot trust what you're putting in your body. And you can see it on a TV commercial, you can hear it on the radio, somebody can tell you about it. But if that certification is not there, you know, where are they sourcing their materials? Have they been tested? I mean, you know, for all you know, those 
super greens that you've been taking could be ground up grass clippings from some guy's backyard. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> that has happened, believe me. That has happened years ago. So again, understand that certification is a very expensive certification, which is why a lot of companies won't spend the money on it. This company makes sure they did it, for sure. And so um, this is a great dovetail. This is uh, Healthy Starts, now it's just called Healthy Starts. But it, what it is is that it's actually the largest children's observational study in the entire world. They've got close to like 2 million subjects in it. What it is is that a child anywhere from the age of four up to the age of 25 can get juice plus for free with an adult sponsor. You just fill out an occasional questionnaire. And the results that are coming back in the kids that have finished the program are amazing. Um, the kids who finished the program, they finished the program had far fewer days where they're getting sick. Um, they're not having to see their pediatrician. They're not missing school. Um, and it's fascinating because one of the metrics that they didn't use initially that they use now is that kids who enter this program who are addicted to the sugary sweet stuff, they enter the program that way, but they exit the program not craving sugary sweets anymore. You know what they exit craving? Fruits and veggies, believe it or not. And that was a metric the company did not see, but they do now. So please get with the person who invited you because it's an awesome, awesome program for sure. Okay, a couple more uh, things and we'll move on to the stories here. Um, so this is a complete um, shake mix. This is a completely plant-based protein. The primary plant protein in here is non-GMO, water wash, low processed soy. Um, it's got lots of good fiber. It's gluten-free, you can see all that. Low fat, non-dairy, no coloring, low glycemic, and 100% vegan. So <laughs> when I mention the word soy, so many people's antennas go up, right? You know, my doctor says I can't have it because I have a history of breast cancer, or can't have it because I have a history of thyroid issues. There is a fundamental difference between non-GMO water wash, low processed soy, which is basically like taking it out of the ground and washing it and sticking it in your body. <clears throat> fundamental difference between this and the other soy that's been on the market, which is highly processed stuff, of which there were issues, for sure. <coughs> but if it was ever an issue, then why in the world would MD Anderson Cancer Center one of the leading cancer research institutions in the entire world. If they ever had a problem with it, then why in the world would they use it in a study of their ovarian cancer patients? Okay, that study has already been completed, published in a high-impact journal, Ganyang, and the researchers were so impressed with the health outcomes in that particular study that they're now in a second phase two follow-up study on mortality that should hopefully be published in the next three to five years, okay? But again, there are some people, I don't have a slide for there's some people who just have GI intolerance to soy. And so the company has now come out with a non-soy version. I just don't have a slide for it here. Um, and I'll tell you, it tastes, I don't know how they make plants taste so good, <laughs> but they do. I mean, the vanilla of that, the non-soy tasted like uh, cookie batter or cake batter or whatever. It's amazing to me. I'm like, is this really a plant? It's awesome. But they also have this product too, which is awesome. So this is a, um, this is the Juice Plus Perform. And basically what they did is they doubled the amount of protein in it and then halved um, the fiber. It's a very light uh, drink. Uh, I use it before I work out. It's amazing. I've had some of the best workouts ever. I mean, it's got beetroot juice. Um, it's got things that, that boost up your nitric oxide, which allows you know, your vessels to dilate, better clearance of lactic acid, the whole shebang. Um, and it's not just for athletes, you guys. Anybody who requires more protein intake. You know, this could be a pregnant mom. It could be somebody on chemotherapy. Uh, it could be people get older and have age-related sarcopenia or muscle loss. So again, you should check this out because it's awesome. <clears throat> but it does tie into this. And if you're going to be in Charlotte next <coughs> month, I'll be on main stage talking about this. This is a huge partnership, you guys. So for years, we have been knocking on the doors of the United States Olympic um, Committee trying to get our products in there because we're, we're safe and you know, certified. It's been impossible to get through the nutritionists. Well, the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs, their lease is up and they're not renewing. So everything's getting shifted out to the United States Performance Center in Charlotte. I have visited this facility. It is a multi-million dollar facility where they're gonna be testing athletes at any age from you know, little kids at soccer games all the way up to pro athletes, Olympians. The facilities are amazing. And the reason why I say that is because they, the, the, the people who have taken this project over, they know how good our products are. And they're partnering with our company and they're only going to exclusively use in their athletes our products across the board. And that's a huge, you can clap if you want. It's fine. 
we have been we have been waiting for years on this one, and um, we're really excited about it. So more to come, more to come on this one. Um, oh yeah, so I stick this one in here too because I speak to a lot of athletes, and um, a lot of athletes think that plant proteins are proof proof, right? That you can't build muscle with plant proteins. Well, that's you know, take a look at a giraffe and tell me you can't eat plants that have muscles, right? <laughs> but um, this particular study found that an animal-based diet with whey protein, with an animal, but with a dairy protein supplement, that the plant-based diet using soy isolate supplement was just as effective at building and maintaining muscle man mass as the animal-based, okay? Everybody thought this is the way to go to build muscle. No, they both do the same thing. The problem is that this side over here is wrought with cytokines. Pro-inflammatory stuff, you name it. I always tell athletes, you can either pay me now or pay me later. <laughs> you know? um, this is clean burning fuel over here. Much preferred, and that's again, why the United States Performance Center is using it, because they know these studies. I presented this to them uh, a year ago. So they understand the value of the product. So juice plus, think of it as bridging the gap. It bridges the gap between the reality of what we eat every day, whether that was good or not, and a more optimal amount of whole food-based nutrition that provides a rich pool of antioxidants and phytonutrients from which our bodies are designed and knows exactly what to do with to contribute to ideal health. But what I think is great is this. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you get to almost 50 different kinds of plants coursing through your veins every day. Think about that. What's your health worth to you? you know, for about the price of a cup of coffee, all those plant nutrients hitting every cell inside your body, making them healthy. So it's another one I stuck in, it's kind of new. So you know, everything the last few years has been about the microbiome, right? Healthy gut, it's an axis for health for the rest of your body. And this is a statement from Rob Knight, who's one of the co-founders of the Earth Microbiome Project. And he says, as you can see, the single greatest predictor of a healthy gut is the diversity of plants in our diet. The diversity, the rainbow of colors, the fiber, all that stuff is so important for a healthy gut. And I didn't even know, but 90 to 95% of your serotonin, your happy chemicals are made in your gut. I didn't know that. So a healthy gut is a happy gut. Makes you happy too. <laughs> I just made that up. Anyway. <laughs> wow. Uh, so anyway, but so this is we're talking about a little bit of the microbiome. There's a study that goes along with this. So the company wanted to know if Juice Plus would help improve the, the gut microbiome. And so compared to the placebo group, it really, really did. Uh, just the, the essentials, just the plant powders themselves, significantly increased the short chain fatty acid butyrate in the gut. And butyrate is probably one of the most important short chain fatty acids for overall um, gut health. And then when they added the complete shake to, mix to it, it's just additive. So again, this is the diversity of the plants, right? The rainbow of colors that contributes to a healthy gut. Okay, so you know, most of the omegas on the market today derive their polyunsaturated fatty acids, particularly their omega-3s from fish or krill. But fish or krill actually have to eat the algae in order to make the conversion inside their bodies. So the company's like, skip the fish, we'll go straight to the source. So they source and harvest most of their omegas, particularly omega-3s from algae but they round out the rest of the omega spectrum, the five, six, seven, and nine, using the oils from cold pressed seeds. You know, you can see it from there, seed buckthorn, pomegranate, safflower, raspberry, tomato. And each of those omegas has a specific beneficial role in human physiology, you know, in decreasing inflammation, improving cardiovascular health, improving cardio, um, you know, skin, healthy skin and gums, brain function, the whole thing across the board. Um, and it's awesome to understand how important omegas are. They have now found, and I didn't know this, this is just all breaking this year, this in March of this year. Omegas are now rising to the top, kind of like uh, vitamin D was years ago, kind of like the microbiome. It's all about omegas. They're finding out that if you have a low omega-3 index, you carry the same mortality as a chronic smoker. I didn't know that. Um, and so, what they're doing is basically, you need to get your omegas tested is what I'm saying. And they're finding out that, and this is right here, if, if omega, the omega-3 index, which is an indicator of what your omega status is, is not one of these routine tests you can get at LabCorp or SonoraQuest or whatever. So there's a company 
omegaquant.com, and they'll send you a little kit. It's like 40 or 50 bucks. And it's just, uh, you just, it's a little finger prick, put it on the blot, send it back in, and within a week they send you what your omega-3 index is. <laughs> now, most Americans have an omega-3 index of 4% or below. Optimal <laughs> is between 8 and 12%. So my wife and I sent these in. I wish I had like a before and after because we'd already been on the omega supplement. So you want to be around 8 so uh, our results came back. I was 7.8, and my wife was 8.2. <laughs> I hear about it all the time, every day. How's your omega doing today, honey? <laughs> but anyway, so you know, it, again, you should get this tested because having an omega index that's up there is really, really important. And again, I did not know this, but a lot of things are just evolving very, very quickly. But when we think of the omegas, we think about brain health, right? Because our brains are, you know, 60% fat. And, you know, the omegas have a tropism for that. So this is a study that was actually commissioned, started before the omega was brought to market. So they wanted to know if the Juice Plus capsules, the, the, the powdered produce, would have an effect on brain health. And so compared to the placebo group, the Juice Plus group had a significant increase in working memory, attention, and processing speed. Basically, you can think of it as a significant increase in mental acuity. And so again, you can imagine if the omegas, when they come out, and they did come out, but if they're put into this kind of a test, can you imagine what that's gonna look like? When you combine capsules with the omegas, uh, and there's already some inkling about that in some early research, it's gonna be fascinating. And then, um, okay, so I don't, you guys don't have one here. Oh yeah, you do, right there, right there. So this is on our lanai when we moved to Naples a couple years ago from um, Arizona. And the tower garden is basically a, a vertical um, aeroponic, hydroponic gardening system. You know, you don't need dirt to really grow all your fruits and veggies. Dirt just acts as a medium to trap for oxygen, water, and nutrients, right? So all this is is just a tub <coughs> full of water and nutrients with a, with a pump. And it pumps those nutrients through that center column. And then they drip over these holes right in here. This is where you put your plants. And it just drips those nu the nutrients and the oxygen and water over the roots. And these things grow like crazy, you guys. Technology actually came out of Epcot. Um, and the company just acquired this or about several years ago, but it's awesome. And I'm telling you, we just harvested some of the most amazing strawberries I've ever tasted in my life. I mean, they're the sweetest things I've ever had. <laughs> and we're just, we've got tons of plants. We have heirloom tomatoes come off this. This is how we make our smoothies. And we've got kale. Um, we've got all kinds of different spinaches. Um, we've got broccoli sprouts, we've got everything on there. So if you're not familiar with this, get with the person invited you because it's really plug and play gardening. And trust me, you do not have to have a green thumb. I don't have a green thumb. Make it work. Okay, and so I alluded to this in the beginning of the talk. Um, and this is the study I want to kind of kind of put a bow on my talk. I waited for years for the study to come out. This was a study that came out of Australia, again, a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled studies, where they found out that compared to the placebo group, the Juice Plus group had a significant uh, decrease in cholesterol production and inflammation, decrease in inflammation. It's another anti-inflammatory study. But in this particular study, what the researchers did is they looked at a snippet of the participant's DNA, and they looked at those epigenetic switches that I talked about in the beginning that modulate genes, how they're turned on and off. And believe me, you guys, this is a 43 page paper and I read all 43 pages and I fell asleep like 43 times. <laughs> research can be boring. But what the researchers found out is that compared to the placebo group, the Juice Plus group had a favorable modulation of over 1,600 of those genes that had to do with cholesterol production, that had to do with inflammation. But what the researchers weren't looking for, what I found, is that some of those epigenetic switches that were being turned on or off had to do with cancer genes. Turning off oncogenes, which are cancer genes. Turning on tumor suppressor genes, all right? So remember in the beginning that I said just because great grandma had breast cancer, grandma had breast cancer, mom had breast cancer, doesn't mean you have to get that cancer? There you go, right there. You know, so what does this mean? I don't know, but this is the first time anywhere in the world, in a controlled setting, that they've shown that fruit and veggie powder concentrates can modulate genomic expression. We just kind of knew that living a healthy lifestyle, eating lots of fruits and veggies did this, 
that had never been dem demonstrated in a study this uh, extensive and this uh, great. So again, waited for this study for years, finally came out. Uh, it's gonna be, it just, it's awesome. And again, you know, they're teaching this more, and Dr. Corson would know this, but they're teaching more, although it's got a long way to go, about uh, nutrition and its effect in the human genome, and uh, the effect of our DNA, it's called nutritional genomics. And it's finally being taught to medical students and residents. It's got, got a long way to go. Uh, but at least it's being recognized that the food that you eat can either have good, about, good effects on your DNA or bad effects. I'll go for the good. I mean, I just turned 93, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyways, my story, uh, let me tell you my story, because my story actually starts with the science, because that's kind of how I'm wired. This study was so profound that it was accepted and published in the top sports medicine journal in the entire country, Medicine and Science and Sports and Exercise. And it was a study that was done on the Austrian Special Forces Cobra units, which is their equivalent to our Navy SEALs. You know, these are big, rough, rugged, athletic specimens. And basically, it was a 28-week study they did on these athletes, exercising them periodically during this 28-week window. There were two groups in the study. One group of athletes that got the dummy pill of placebo, depicted in the red bars, and the other group of athletes that took Juice Plus during the 28-week study, depicted in the green bars. And the researchers wanted to know what kind of protein damage or oxidation is occurring in these athletes' bodies as a function of them exercising during this 28-week window. And without going into great detail, from the beginning of the study at baseline to the final exercise session, there was a significant accumulation of these oxidized or damaged proteins circulating around in these athletes' bodies that were not taking juice plus, that were taking the dummy pill. That's compared to the athletes at the end of the study that were taking juice plus, they didn't have any accumulation of those oxidized proteins in their bodies. So what does all that mean for you and me? Well, just just within the last five, six, six, seven, eight years, study after study after study is now making the link between this accumulation of these oxidized proteins in athletes' bodies to overtraining and overreaching syndromes. So you see an athlete, it's gonna be a little Johnny going off to soccer, all the way up to the elite professional athletes start, that start off a new season healthy. But as that season progresses and their training starts to get ramped up, they start to get more and more sore, more and more tired, more and more sick, more and more injured. Well, they're now making the link between this accumulation of these oxidized proteins in athletes' bodies, not only within a particular season, but actually carry over from one season to the next. I mean, who wants to end up like this? You know, when you can get all the benefits of an exercise program that minimize, minimize the damaging effects it can have on your body from overuse, and that's what this really does prove. I mean, I tell athletes, you know, if there was a magic bullet for exercise performance, believe me, we would have found it already. This is the closest thing you get to um, the edge, to exercise performance over your competition. And that ties into my, my story here. So mine is, uh, this is my finish at the Ironman World Championships in Kona. Uh, and you can see it took me 10 hours, 10 minutes, and 12 seconds, and I'll never forget those 12 seconds as long as I am. <laughs> no, I actually, I'm almost 62, and somebody said that, you know, you should just come out because you're at the bottom of your age group and go you know, whip every, but he's butt in your age. I'm like, go back and train again for this. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Been there, done that, right? But I actually had a pretty good race in this race. I actually, I finished the race, went upstairs in the hotel shower, came downstairs, sat at the finishing line, watching people finish the race. This is when you see televised every year but, uh, with NBC. There's helicopters everywhere with cameras. It's a pretty cool event. And that wasn't to say that I wasn't sore or tired because I was. I mean, that's a long, nonstop day. But I felt distinctly different in this race versus the year before when I did Ironman Florida. And I had an absolutely miserable race at Ironman Florida. I was flat, fatigued, and tired going into race day itself, which I now know based on the study I just showed you. That I had overtrained. I had burned out. Um, I was so sore I could barely walk after the race, and I was constantly sick. Basically, my body was trashed. And I hate to admit it, but at that time, I was taking up to eight vitamin, mineral, and herbal supplements. I was taking a concoction of pills and things that my training partners were taking. Hey, if it's working for you, down the hatch. And based on the, stu the studies I've been showing you, they weren't good for me at all. They were working against me. And the only thing I did differently from that race in Florida to this race a year later was that I was approached by this very attractive and intelligent woman who started engaging me in this conversation about oxidative stress that occurs when you exercise. 
And I did not know what that was because they don't teach doctors about oxidative stress. But she was very insistent that I take these concentrated fruit and veggie powder you know, concentrates and capsules. Now, if you're a healthcare provider, or you know healthcare providers, we are trained to be very skeptical people. And I was a very skeptical person. You know, what could fruits and veggies and capsules do for me that I wasn't already getting in a healthy plant-based diet? It's practically vegan. But as many of you know, I took them because I wanted to date her. <laughs> now we're married. There you go. <laughs> True story there. Um, and the reason why I knocked myself is because, you know, it, it was really hard for me to kind of wrap my Ivy League doctor brain around something as simple as fruits and veggies and capsules. It wasn't complicated enough for me. I could turn around a bottle of juice plus I could pronounce everything in it because it was food. How could plant powders be as powerful in the human body as some of the prescriptions I was writing for my patients? But I did take them because I wanted to date her. I was skeptical. Whatever it takes. She's taking them, I'll take them. Right? And so I was training for Ironman Hawaii at the time when I started taking them. And it wasn't right away, but I'd say probably two to three months into taking juice plus, I did start to notice some subtle kind of anecdotal you know, testimonial things that were happening to my body that in all my years as a collegiate swimmer and triathlete I'd never noticed before. In the sense I was having a lot less muscle and joint pain. Um, I was recovering a lot quicker between my training and racing sessions. And the other thing I noticed that I wasn't getting sick anymore. I just thought it was common for athletes that do a lot of training to get a couple colds a year. It wasn't happening. And the interesting thing was all my training partners were still suffering with all that stuff. So I knew, and this is the key, I knew that Juice Plus was filling in the rainbow of colors, the variety, that I wasn't already getting a healthy plant-based diet. But being the ever skeptic that I was, I just thought what I was experiencing was all in my head, placebo, right? And that's when I decided to look at the research on the product. And back then, I think there were 15 to 18 studies, now there's over 40. But two of those studies were published in my sports medicine journal. The one I just put up with for you a couple slides ago. Are you kidding me? They can study fruits and veggies and capsules with a placebo in humans, not rats, mice, or test tubes, Using gold standard protocol, get those kinds of results and have them accepted and published in one of the top sports medicine journals in the world. Bam, light bulb on. What happened to me as an athlete was backed by the science. Science proved that what happened to me wasn't a placebo, it was real, absolutely real. Okay, my little old journey here too. So this is, um, <clears throat> God, when did this happen? 2017. Um, this is when we lived in Arizona still. I had a bike trail behind my house. I used to take it all the time. And it was one day back in 2017, I was coming home from the ride and I, and I was literally, you guys, like two blocks from my house in the neighborhood. And I'm coming around the corner, I look up and a landscaping truck had cut that corner and I had nowhere to go but down. So I landed on my right hip, slid up under the truck, thank God it stopped. Uh, but I had massive pain in my hip. And so I called Heidi and she came and got me. We went to the ER and they did a CAT scan of my hip. <coughs> Um, and it wasn't the ball part, but it was the socket that it fits into called the acetabulum. Um, and I don't have the CAT scan to show you, but basically my acetabulum looked like that on the CAT scan. Um, and the radiologist uh, estimated probably between 30 to 32 fracture lines. And if you're a healthcare provider, that the fracture lines extend to both the superior and the inferior uh, ramus. So I basically I trashed my acetabulum. Now, just can't leave this room. So my accident, <laughs> my accident occurred like four o'clock in the afternoon. And it wasn't until, I think it was about 2 a.m. that my trauma or my orthopedic surgeon came in to tell me all this. Now that's lots and lots of hours with happy pain-killing bug juice going in my veins, right? And apparently I was telling everybody in the ER, I have no idea what's going here, but I'm gonna flip and heal better than you people have ever seen in your life. <laughs> I ruined it for the company, but anyway. So my orthopedic surgeon came in, and again, it was like two in the morning, and he stopped, he goes, wow, because he'd been talking to the nurse, he goes, you are healthy. He goes, in my 30 years of practice, I'd never seen anybody trash their acetabulum like that where those pieces don't separate and I have to go in and pin them. So he said, the good news is that you don't need surgery. He goes, but the bad news is, is that with that extent of an injury, um, that is a nine to 12 month recovery with the assistance of a walker. And you guys can tell I got ADHD. You can't keep me confined to a walker. <laughs> um, but picture this, so I got released to go back to the gym like three or four weeks after the accident or whatever. Picture this, man. Iron Man hat, cut off t-shirt, shorts, tennis shoes, 
Ocean of water. I just put a sign in front and say, kick, kick me, you know. But anyway, but anyway so um, I went back in. Oh, let me see. I think, yeah, so I went home after, once I, once I got released from the hospital, I went home and I told Heidi, I said, we're not going to change anything um, that we haven't already been doing for years. I want to know if that plant matter is enough to catalyze or accelerate my healing. So this is what we've been doing every day, four of each, including the four omegas, and then we do a shake every day. And you guys, it wasn't nine months to heal. It was not 12 months to heal. Three months. Three months, you guys. I went back in for a repeat PET scan. No pain, no nothing. And I was sitting on the gurney when he came back in the room at, after he read the scan. And he looked, he came in like white as a ghost. And he's like, can I see your hip again? And I'm like, yeah, whatever, it's all over the place, it's fine. He goes, yeah, I thought he had scanned the wrong hip. He goes, I went from 30 some odd fracture lines down to two to three. He had told me in 30 years of practice, he'd never seen that before. And the funny thing was, I had told him about Juice Plus you know, the weeks before, or months before. And he was in that room that day, and he looked at me, and he goes, so what was that stuff you were taking? <laughs> and I gave him like a little one minute spiel on it, and you could just see him, and because doctors you know, don't have nutrition, you could just see the wheels going up there. And he's like, okay, that's fine, just keep taking that, but make sure you drink a glass of milk every day and have at least one steak a, uh, you know, a week or so. I'm like, <laughs> and again, you know, it's a mic drop moment. But I used to be like that, you guys. That's what they teach us in med school, right? I mean, I have to do, and unfortunately, a lot of people go to their doctors for nutrition education or nutrition advice. You know, unless they've done an extended amount of, of you know, research beyond that, like Dr. Corson has done, they're probably not the best people to talk to, okay? They're probably not. But it's an amazing healing process. And again, I don't even have time to go into the studies of why I healed um, so quickly. Okay, last story, then we can all go. Um, hopefully this will inspire you guys. Um, this is my younger brother, Will. Um, and we believe that my brother, Will, was born with a heart defect that did not manifest itself until he was in his 40s. He ended up having a massive stroke at his 40s. And when they got him to the Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale and worked him up, it turned out that he had a ventricular aneurysm which is an outpouching of his heart, which caused the blood to clot and caused his stroke. So my brother had an implantable defibrillator pacemaker. He's on Coumadin, had a whole boatload of medications that he was on. And this was in 2016-ish. Uh, I was doing a version of this lecture in South Carolina, actually, because I'm heading there tomorrow. Um, and I got a call that my, day, my brother went into sudden cardiac arrest and they were coding him, so I needed to come home. Fortunately, they revived him. They got him back to the Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale. When they worked him out, it turned out that he was in complete heart failure and that the only thing that was gonna save him was a heart transplant. So he was put on the heart transplant list and there he lay flat in the ICU in the bed waiting for a heart. And unfortunately, one never showed up. Um, and because his heart wasn't pumping efficiently, he wasn't perfusing his organs, he started to have his organs shut down. It's called multi-system organ failure. And so what they do for you at that point is they do open heart surgery, they put a pump in your heart called an LVAD, or a left ventricular assist device. And that acts as a bridge to get you to a transplantable heart. Well, that was the next procedure for him, but he wasn't gonna have anything to do with it. Now, I remember walking in the room after they told him what they needed to do, and he was crying, he's like, I've had it. And, you know, I made my peace with the Lord, I am so tired of being a pain cushion. You know, I'm, I'm done with this stuff. And I'm like, no, you're not, no, you're not. You know, you have a wife to live for, you have a son to live for, and you know what? You have a story to tell. You have chapters to write. I don't know what they all look like, but you can't shut that book now. So he went through the, um, that procedure and had it done, and this is him, I think this is, oh, and this is him immediately post-op, I forgot about this part. So this is him immediately post-op after the pump was put in his heart. And I want you to take a look at this IV pole here. Mm -hmm. You know, as an ear doc, I mean, I, I know what those are. They're called pressors. They dobetamine, dopamine, norepinephrine. I know those things. I know how to, what they do. I know how to administer them. But when you're on the other side of that and you're a family member or you're the patient, that's a scary place to be. And I've never been there before. I've always been the provider. So again, that's my brother immediately post-op after the pump. And this is him. I think this was about three weeks after the pump was put in.
So the, the reason why I relate uh, an intimate family moment with you guys is for a big reason. You know, my brother didn't really have a choice. You know, my brother was bad, born with a bad heart. He didn't have a choice between this and that. I would dare say that every single one of us in this room tonight, no matter what your health journey looks like tonight, you still have this choice. You have to enjoy the choice to engage in the apple and avoid the scalpel. You have the choice to engage in a healthy lifestyle and maybe avoid surgery, or maybe avoid being on multiple medications the older that you get, or maybe cut down the medications that you're on. The choice is yours, and it does not have to be daunting at all. Okay, so what happened to my brother? Well, roughly three to four months after the pump was put in his heart, he got the big call for a heart. Uh, and this is us celebrating about a year later, and that's my brother right there. And you can clap. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I have, to, I have to tell you, just real quick here. So this is, once a year, this is when we lived in Arizona still, but there's a place in old Scottsdale called the Sugar Bowl. And it's this, this old um, ice cream parlor that was built in like 1928, I think. We go there once a year for lunch around Christmas every year. And this was a year after he got his heart. Take a look at my mom, is she not stoked? <laughs> so I told my mom once I saw this picture, I said, you had a wine flask right down there. <laughs> I know my mom denies it. But. but anyway, what's so cool about this, you guys, that you know, here is here is a guy who's gonna shut the book. And now he's actively been actively seeking out the people that he got the heart from. He can't find them. But he's looking for it. Here's a guy who's gonna shut it down, right? He's gonna shut it down. So the bottom line is life doesn't get better by chance, it gets better by change. So what will be a simple change change for you to think about when you leave here tonight? Maybe it's you know, drinking more water or starting an exercise program or being more regular with an exercise program. Whatever it is that you decide to do, and we have talked a lot about this tonight for darn good reason, that on the left is not a magic bullet. But is it catalyst for better health? There's not a single aspect of human physiology that will not be improved by putting that kind of nutrition in your body. But it'll be a unique experience for every single person on the face of the earth and especially here in this room, depending on your own unique physiologic demands, the body responds to good nutrition in the ways that it needs to, okay? So the bottom line is, you know, this really is a healthy living revolution we're going through. You know, post COVID, this, we live in a hurting world, you guys, do you know that, right? People are wounded, you know, emotionally, spiritually, physically, you know, we have answers for that. Um, I love being a part of a company that's progressive. You know, they look, instead of playing checkers, they're playing chess. They're always looking way ahead. And I love pairing up with this company. So I'm not here to sell you anything tonight. I just know what I know and I have to get it out. And so, you know, just like my brother is now being able to write a book in chapters, so do you. You know, I want you to lean up against this information. You can be a powerful person, not just for yourself, but for your family and the people around you. You can be a beacon of hope. Because again, just like my brother has a story to tell, so do you. And you can't write a big, long, healthy, multiple chapters of your life if you don't have your health, right? So what I offer you tonight, you guys, isn't a miracle, but boy, is a lot of hope. A lot of hope that is backed by a good, sound science. So you guys have been awesome. I miss my Indiana people. Have me up sooner next time, please. Thank you guys.